You know, last week, Tom Holly in Sky 3 just happened to turn his camera on this on live TV. Hundreds of homeless people spotted and gathering at the side of the freeway. It is definitely a tent city of sorts there. Now that struck me because this is what I saw firsthand in the very same area just months ago. So this before this now the homeless project wanting to know what changed and what is changing tonight. We asked the man who fights homelessness every single day of his life. and His answer is this the lack of affordable housing. You've got tents here and you've got shelters here that look like they're going to be here for a while. Tucked away from the thousands of eyes that pass the area along I-15. A little bit out of sight. A COVID era mini city of homeless people. Is this a sign of a greater problem to come? I believe so. Arnold Stock says his decades of work to end homelessness in our valley through Share Village and other partnerships started with alarm bells going off long ago. There's no place for people to go. I remember in the in late 1980s, I was interviewed on a PBS special, and it was the title was the series was by the year 2000, no place to rent. Stock and others concerned with rising rents and unemployment worry that was a self-fulfilling prophecy. Affordable housing hard to find, and the concern that a state eviction moratorium could pass for good, leaving many out in the cold the fall and winter will bring. There was 18 to 20,000 people are laid off in MGM. We've had tens of thousands of people laid off, furloughed, uh, hours cut back. The evictions are going to cause a lot of homelessness. People will not be able to stay in the housing that they're in. Houston, Texas, last week. Constable, need to come to the door. There, eviction moratoriums have passed. Hello, Constable. We ain't got nowhere to go. This CNN story showing what Arnold Stalk worries could happen here. People like Israel Rodriguez evicted and walking with a baby in his arms. When it hit, I lost my job. So it took me like a month to get another job. This is my check, but I ain't making it with $300. What are you going to do with all of your stuff? That's, that's, that's trash. They can throw it in the trash because we don't have a car. We don't have help. We don't have nobody that can come, you know, help us out right now. Nobody. We got ourselves, me and the kids and her. We, that's it. We watched the Houston story with Stalk. His reaction? As I see things that happen. Sorry. I see things that happen every day that are, um, that are very, very uh, stressful. They're hard to watch. If we don't provide affordable housing in Clark County, what will happen? You're gonna see a rapid increase in people sleeping on freeway embankments. The NFL season kicking off what some are saying could be a once in a lifetime opportunity for both the sports books and the sports betters. We're thrilled. We're ecstatic. All sports shut down for months, and now it seems like everything is back at once. Take a look at the board at the Westgate. You have the NHL, NFL, NBA, MLB, WNBA, and more all at the same time. John Murray with the Westgate Sportsbook. You know, normally in August, baseball would be really the only game in town. You might never see this again. What people see inside the sports book is different, too. It used to be chairs everywhere, squeezed in, everyone, for, everyone elbow to elbow. Now it's very spread out and a lot more safe. Nathan Kropp came up from Phoenix with his best friend for a weekend of football at the Westgate Sportsbook. Yep, come out opening day for NFL, come out and do some prop bets, watch games, get some bets for the weekend, and just hang out and enjoy the atmosphere out here. Naturally, fewer people inside would lead to fewer in-person bets, and that means more betting online. Last year at this time, it was about a 50-50 split between the mobile app and the ticket, the over-the-counter tickets. This year, it's more like 70% on the app. Regular Gregory Tapscott says he doesn't even really notice a change anymore. He doesn't even register that what's going on in the world right now is my mind's fixated on, on betting. Murray betting the first NFL Sunday will be a much needed success. Sunday in here it's going to be almost normal again. Hey, Raider Nation is excited about the inaugural season for the Las Vegas Raiders with head coach John Gruden. The silver and black prepping at the beautiful HQ for Carolina this Sunday. And that's where we find Amber Dixon, who breaks down the matchup in today's Raiders Report. Following practice here on Friday is when the Raiders expect to take off for North Carolina, which is where on Sunday they will open their first ever season as a Las Vegas franchise, facing a Panthers team that Coach John Gruden says he does not know all that well. 
Sure, they've got Pro Bowl running back Christian McCaffrey, but they have a new quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater coming from New Orleans and a new head coach in Matt Rule, who's coming from the college ranks, having last led at Baylor and Temple. I've never seen Carolina on tape, so I'm a little, you know, I got negative feelings about that. I wish I could see something. We've been watching Baylor. We've been watching Temple. We've been watching LSU's offense, and we've been watching Saints offense to get ready for the Carolina offense. So uh, it's been a challenge that way. It always comes down to, you know, you, you win up front, and I think that they've built that team to, to win with their offensive and defensive lines. At last check, the Raiders are favored to defeat the Panthers by a field goal. From Henderson, I'm Amber Dixon. Since ancient times, Mars has intrigued humans. It's named after the Roman god of war. When humans first saw it through the first telescopes, it appeared to have canals leading them to wonder if it was inhabited. Now, NASA hopes a helicopter carrying rover named Perseverance will find out if that's ever been the case, if only on a primitive scale. The central goal of the Perseverance mission is to seek the signs of life on Mars. Not things that are presently alive, but to look into Mars' distant past when the surface was very different, when there were lakes and rivers on the surface. Very different, and according to NASA scientist Ken Farley, possibly very much like Earth before Mars lost its protective magnetic field, allowing particles from the sun to sweep away its atmosphere. With the loss of that um, protection on Mars, the atmosphere was stripped away, the water was lost, and the planet went into an irreversible uh, decline. The ambitious mission to learn more about catastrophic climate change on Mars began July 30th in Florida. And liftoffs as the countdown to Mars continues. A plutonium-powered rover the size of an SUV began its seven-month one-way trip to the red planet on top of this Atlas rocket. The perseverance of humanity launching the next generation of robotic explorers to the red planet. Perseverance, or Percy as it's called, is the biggest and most advanced rover ever sent to Mars. One of its tasks, pave the way for humans. This is a, a life detection mission. You know, not all of it, many aspects of it are doing different things as we talked about, supporting human exploration, measuring atmosphere, doing things that help support other missions in the future. Included in its sophisticated equipment package, two microphones, one to let us hear its plunge into the Martian atmosphere, known as the seven minutes of terror, and the other to listen for a Martian wind. Once on Mars, Perseverance will take rock samples and drop them like a trail of breadcrumbs to be picked up several years from now and returned to Earth by another rover. UNLV scientist Libby Hausrath, who's on NASA's Mars 2020 team, says studying those samples in a lab here on Earth is critical. Probably if there was uh, ever life on Mars, you know, bringing samples back is what we would need to know to show that definitively, right? Because, you know, you can just analyze it with, you know, um, the, the cutting edge laboratory techniques on Earth um, to, to look for any of that past evidence. Another experiment will determine if it's possible to convert the abundant carbon dioxide on the Martian surface to oxygen. Perseverance will also deploy a small helicopter from its belly to fly ahead of the rover to locate dangerous terrain and find areas for Perseverance to explore. The rover's landing zone is near the planet's Jezero Crater, where there's an ancient river delta that scientists say rivers and streams once deposited sediment from a vast swath of the Martian surface. That's where House Rat says we have a solid chance of finding signs of life. There's a real diversity of uh, of different types of minerals, including clay minerals, which preserve, um, which both indicate a past uh, history of, of the presence of liquid water, which is required for habitability. Because of Professor Hausrath's involvement, some lucky UNLV science students will get to help NASA make sure Perseverance goes where it needs to go on Mars, collecting samples. In 2026, a launch vehicle will land with a fetch rover to pick up the rocks, then blast it into Martian orbit where a third spacecraft will retrieve the samples to bring them back to Earth.